It was 2 p.m. on a weekday in my current events class in my second year of high school when I had my first anxiety or panic attack. Our teacher was talking in the dark with a PowerPoint behind him with 10 minutes left in the class when I felt an overwhelming heat come over me. I had experienced anxiety in certain situations, but this time I felt like there was absolutely nothing I could do to control it. A knot formed in my stomach and the heat grew more and more intense like someone lit a fire under me. I actually thought, wow, I'm gonna die, this is it. This horrible feeling grew in intensity for five minutes until I couldn't take it and I walked right out the classroom and headed straight for the door. I got outside and called my mom to come pick me up. I knew I couldn't sit like this through my final 50 minute class of the day. After laying in bed for a few hours at home, I began to feel normal again, but I had a whole new set of problems on my hands. Will this happen again? Surely since it just did, it will again. And what if it happens while I'm traveling? What possibly could have happened to make me feel such a horrible feeling when I was fine an hour before? Like most other people at this time, I had my own set of issues that I believe I had to get under my control or my life would be a mess and I would be a failure. I kept this me against the world mindset for the next year as I worked nonstop on making YouTube videos. At first, I I loved making videos, but as time went on and I was making more money, being praised by my peers and even strangers, like it would any other 16 year old, it consumed me. I spent the first half of every day editing the video I had filmed the day before, then when completed, I started on the next one. It didn't matter if I was sick, if it was Christmas morning, or if I was traveling, the cycle continued. I had to do this no matter what. I posted videos every day ranging from 10 to 15 minutes long. I was the same anxious kid, if not more anxiety filled than before, and everything about YouTube brought out more anxiety. But I was taught growing up, if you want to be successful, you have to do things you don't want to do. So that was my mindset. Then, around February 2017, after almost two years of making videos, I was planning to film my video like usual, but I also needed to help my mom move storage from a building which was going to take up a lot of my day. So I helped move stuff, and by the time we were done, the sun was already setting and I broke down. I was faced with the familiar situation of not having enough time to film a good video for the next day, and usually I would find something to film, but this time I just didn't have it in me. I spent that evening anxiously talking back and forth with myself in my head saying, you can't miss a day, just go film. Any Anything is better than nothing. This went on and on until I finally broke into tears. I felt lost. I tried to satisfy my mind by telling it, I've accomplished so much. I, I have all these great things. Why can't you be happy? But I had this conversation with myself many times. Actually, I had this conversation with myself on a daily basis, but it never eased the worry and anxiety filled relationship I had with myself. So I decided I'm gonna take a break for a while. I took a month off from YouTube and having to work all the time. And I actually felt a little better after that month, but the time came where I knew, okay, that was nice, but time to get back to work. So I returned to making videos. I told myself I would come back to creating videos with a new attitude that I was going to do whatever it was that I wanted to do and I was gonna stop caring about the numbers. But after all that time making videos for the most views and the most revenue, it was impossible for me to let go. I thought I had a new outlook at first, but I just couldn't let go. If my views dropped under a certain threshold, I was failing. Now I can see that this is the mindset I had developed over several years, which I couldn't change by taking a short break. I had fallen back into the same trap wake up, work, be miserable. Back then, I had equated happiness to numbers and money, but even if the money was up, I was still down. At this point in my life, I began to feel real depression. There was nothing I could do or tell myself to feel any better. I felt like I would never escape this abyss I was in. Then, after some consideration, I decided to move to California with some friends to create videos as a change of scenery and lifestyle because I had enjoyed visiting California many times before and I was willing to try anything to get me out of this dreadful place I was in. So that's what I did. I lived in California for three months, we threw parties, I met a lot of other YouTubers, and went to numerous events. And again, after every attempt of finding relief within myself, I was at a dead end. So here I was, halfway across the country from home, living the lifestyle that had been glorified by everyone around me and on social media, and I still could not find the slightest sense of fulfillment. I couldn't enjoy any experiences that came my way. So, knowing my family missed me, and frankly, I missed home, I moved back with my mom, which is my current home base. At the same time I moved back home, my YouTube channel had started to lose pace. I was gaining less subscribers each day, getting less views, and making much less money. I was uploading three times a week instead of every day, so I knew I would make less, but there still weren't the same number of people watching each video. But this time, it was different. Instead of getting worried and upset like usual, I remembered something from a video I had watched on the car ride home that said, detachment doesn't mean you own nothing, it means that nothing owns you. This was the first piece of philosophy I had ever read and I took it to heart. This set off a spark in my brain, knowing that if I didn't cling like usual, I felt free. This was the first time in years that I felt inner peace. I will never forget that feeling, having spent so long trying to find peace and happiness and a simple quote had opened my mind to it. It was like there was a ladder that was laying right next to me the whole time I was in the abyss. 
this. This leads into the last three months of my life, reading and studying philosophy and psychology. First off, these are the kind of things that I would put in my notes when I was miserable. It's obvious to see how much I battled the voice in my head, and I didn't know it, but books were about to start me on my spiritual journey. Also, I almost never read any books assigned to us in school. School actually made me hate reading, but I simply couldn't get enough of these books. They were about to change the way I think forever. One of my all-time favorite philosophers is Alan Watts, a British-American philosopher who interpreted and popularized Eastern philosophy for a Western audience. In other words, he went across the world and brought back a bunch of knowledge to us Americans. The first quote of his that resonated with me was, we are always trying in one way or another to get away from ourselves as we are. I then realized I had spent most of my teenage years longing to be like someone else or have what someone else had. It didn't matter what I had or what I had accomplished. This is what I did and this is what most people do. So it was impossible for me to see that who I wanted to be was always me and that where I was right now is where I needed to be at all times. I went with this saying for a while and it's true. In the first book I read of Alan's, he said, the meaning of life is just to be alive. It is so plain and so obvious and so simple, yet everybody rushes around in a great panic as if it were necessary to achieve something beyond themselves. I saw that the path I had always been trying to cut for myself was always clear. I just didn't know any better. Knowing these things would begin to make everyday life more enjoyable, but I would still find myself worrying. The voice in my head that I'm sure you know all too well would still constantly bug me as it had in the past. But why? Why does my human brain have to think far into the past and future all the time? Why can't I be present? I remember one one time I went to a movie with friends and ended up leaving halfway through because my brain had a second show going on filled with anxiety and worry. It said, I wonder what the stranger next to me is thinking about me. It's dark in here, but I feel like people are watching me. You see, the mind creates a problem out of no problem and then tries to find the solution. And so eventually I was worrying about missing out on the movie and worrying about the fact that I was worrying. I couldn't even enjoy a simple movie with my friends. Well, this is what Alan calls a vicious circle and my life was full of them. Worrying is considering all of the very variables outside of your control. What might happen? You have to realize that if you think it through, you never could take enough data into consideration. So there's really no point in worrying, but we are addicted to our thoughts. Whenever they pop up, we give them our full attention, even though it is usually negative, and I'm sure you can agree that most of the time you listen to the rambling in your mind, it doesn't end up serving you. If you think all the time, you will have nothing to think about but thoughts, therefore always preventing you from living in the present. And all we have is the present. The past and the future don't even exist. They are illusions that exist in the present. All that we have and all that we've ever had is the eternal now. But the main rule of ending your worry is to try not to control it. A muddy pool clears itself when left alone. Your mind is the exact same way. If I would have known this back then, maybe I could have finished and enjoyed the movie. Thoughts can be tricky though, because we never found this out. You are not your thoughts. You are the awareness that is aware of your thoughts. We know this because we can say the word hello in our head and we can hear it in our head. And if what we want to do is escape the grasp that our thoughts have on us, we can use this to simply be aware of our thoughts and do what Michael Singer calls in my favorite book of his called The Untethered Soul, sitting in the seat of consciousness. The more you sit in the seat of consciousness or seat of self, the more you begin to feel an energy that you've never experienced before. When you are no longer absorbed in your mind's melodrama, but instead comfortably aware of it inside of the seat of self, you will start to feel this flow of energy coming from deep within you. This flow is called spirit. This is what you begin to experience if you hang out with the self instead of hanging out with your inner disturbances. You no longer have to get rid of emotions like anxiety, loneliness, or fear. They become objects of your consciousness. They're just another thing in the universe, like cars, grass, or the stars. It's none of your business. You just let things go. That's what the self does. Awareness does not fight. Awareness releases. Awareness is simply aware while everything in the universe parades before it. Everything you could possibly be aware of is in fact an object to your consciousness. So now this begs another question. If life is just being aware of objects, then what is the meaning of life? Well, that's simple. What actually gives life meaning is the willingness to live it. It isn't any particular event, it's the willingness to experience life's events. The willingness to be aware of every experience that unfolds in this eternal present. And without neurotic thoughts clouding your awareness, the experience just improved a million times over. If you sit within the self, you will experience the strength of your inner being even when your heart feels weak. This is the essence of a spiritual life. Once you learn that it's okay to feel disturbances, they can no longer disturb your seat of consciousness. You will be free. When you get a taste of this peace, of this inner energy, you can walk in this world and the world will never touch you. That is how you become a free being.
being. Don't get upset if you can't seem to be in the seat of self. It takes practice. You've spent your whole life obsessed with the thoughts in your mind, so undoing this will take time and practice. Next time you're on a drive or in the shower and thoughts start popping up, even if you give them all your attention like usual, when you realize it, just effortlessly relax behind the thoughts and be aware. Awareness is the way out and this is true spiritual growth. Another great quote from Alan is, no one imagines that a symphony is supposed to improve as it goes along, or that the whole point of playing is to reach the finale. The point of music is discovered in every moment of playing and listening to it. It is the same, I feel, with the greater part of our lives. And if we are unduly absorbed in improving them, we may forget altogether to live. This for me was my career as a YouTuber. I was always working to get to the top, but what I didn't know is it doesn't exist. So what does everyone want? What are we looking for in this life? Okay, well, imagine God comes down to you on earth and says, what do you want? I can grant you whatever you want. And you say, I, I want a relationship. I want to meet somebody. I want to have the thing I've looked for my whole life. Or you say, I want a house. I want the perfect house. I want the perfect job, a job that really fulfills what I'm looking for. Now, God says, I can give you that, but there's a caveat you will be completely unfulfilled. The partner is everything you wanted, but you will be sad in their presence. The job too is everything you wanted, but will turn hollow for you. And therein lies what you really want. If the job and partner you wanted turned stale for you, you would say, I don't want it. If it's gonna make me feel miserable inside, I really don't want it. Keep it away from me. You see, it isn't true you wanted a relationship. It isn't true you wanted money. It isn't true you wanted a house, kids, to travel the world, etc., etc. What's true is you wanted to feel good inside. You wanted true meaning, inspiration, excitement, and fulfillment moment but these are inner things, not outer things. You listed the things that you listed because they're what you thought you really wanted. So really, all you needed to say when God asked what you really want is a sense of total well-being. I wanna feel love, I wanna feel joy. The mistake was made by doing it indirectly, by saying, I want something outside that I think will make me feel good inside. A wise person starts to realize by trying to control the outside world, by having all these conditions, it makes them miserable inside. 99.9% .9 of human beings have devoted their entire life to getting what they think they want and avoiding what they think they don't want. The answer is in the word want. It becomes much simpler when you realize what you want is to feel good inside. Now the next question is, why can't you? Because your life experience has been, I can only feel good if the outside comes through my senses in a certain way. When you start to go deeper into this and ask, why is it like that? That's when you're growing spiritually. Instead of having conditions of I can only be happy if, you stay spiritually open to every circumstance life gives you. By doing this, life will no longer have to be a certain way for you to feel what you've always wanted to feel. The love you have fought to feel has always been free. You just made conditions for yourself to feel it. This is the greatest lesson I've learned this far in my life. It took me achieving the full circle, achieving what everyone thinks they want, what I thought I wanted in life, to realize what we really want is a sense of total well-being. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? You don't need the whole world to feel good, you just need your soul, which you've always had. Now you can see that everyone is looking for something they already have. We don't realize this because we are so distracted by the human level of existence we are used to. We have a deep-seated set of preferences that get in the way of what we actually want. So why shouldn't you be happy? You gain nothing from being bothered by life's events. It doesn't change the world, you just suffer. There's always going to be something that can bother you if you let it. Alan Watts once said, the real secret of life is to be completely engaged with what you are doing in the here and now. And instead of calling it work, realize it is play. And there really is nothing else better to do than to join in the dance of life. A wise person is wise because they have discovered the unreality of the whole problem. Just like people who know that the earth is flat can't be reasoned with because they know it is so. In the same way, we tend to know that we are separate poor little me and that we are in need of salvation or something. The truth is there is not life on the one hand and you on the other, it is the same. You are not a drop in the ocean, you're the whole ocean in a drop. You are a function of what the whole universe is doing in the same way that a wave is a function of what the whole ocean is doing. And now we can see that anyone who lives under the dominance of a vicious circle is in a chronic state of frustration because he has dedicated his whole life to solving a meaningless problem. Realize in this moment, naturally and truthfully, in whatever emotion, even in anxiety, you are complete. Alrighty, well, big thank you to my brother Tristan for driving home and helping me draw because I can't draw. I really hope you guys found this video interesting and useful and I hope you can apply it to your lives. I'm still practicing applying everything I've learned to my life. The best part about this stuff is you get to pick and choose what you want to apply to your life. If some of the information was like overwhelming or something like that, I mean, I tried to simplify it, but still, if you don't agree with something, you don't, you don't have to apply it to your life. That's the beauty of it. But you guys found out in this video what I've been doing with a lot of my time and I, I really enjoyed writing the script for this video. So if you guys want to see another 
another one. I can definitely go deeper or just go into more topics. Just let me know. Whatever can help you guys, I will do it. But yeah, for now, I think that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope it helped again, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Good night.